Hello Diecast fans and welcome to an all new episode of Jim's Magnificent Miniature Motor Cars. And now this video is going to be a bit of a first for me. It's going to be the very first video in which I will talk about a car that I do not actually own. I am not referring to this Ferrari F40 that you see before you. I own this car. I uh, posted a video of it not too long ago and I adore it. The reason why I put this here is to serve as a reminder that as far as I'm concerned, Tomica Limited Vintage Neo remains the gold standard when it comes to producing premium 164th scale Ferraris. And also because, well, I don't want you guys staring at a blank screen while I'm talking. The model I am going to talk about in this video, however, is also a product of Tomica Limited Vintage Neo. All right? But unlike the Ferrari F40, in this particular case, Tomica Limited Vintage Neo, in my humble opinion, got this model wrong. And I am speaking, my friends, of the Ferrari 288 GTO, a model that uh, TLVN has simply enough named Ferrari GTO. Now, a little bit of a backgrounder, the Ferrari 288 GTO, is actually the uh, the immediate predecessor of the Ferrari F40. As a matter of fact, the F40 was born out of a racing version of the GTO, the GTO Evoluzione, eventually gave birth to the Ferrari F40. Anyway, all that gearhead stuff aside, the Ferrari 280 GTO is an automotive legend, perhaps second only to the Ferrari F40 or the 250 GTO, the, the daddy of them all. The point being, this is a car for which there is absolutely no shortage of visual reference. And considering how well Tomica did with this Ferrari F40, there was absolutely no reason for them not to get the 288 GTO absolutely bang on inch nay millimeter perfect okay and i was i was personally very much looking forward to adding it to my collection until i saw it i saw the pictures i saw the unboxing videos and looked at them again and again and with all due respect to Tomica limited vintage neo and everyone else who has heaped praises upon its Ferrari 288 GTO, I have to respectfully disagree. This car is way, way off. It's visibly off from what the TLV and from what the Ferrari 288 GTO should look like. And that it is a genuine tragedy. You know what? I could go on and on, but let me just show you the pictures so you can see what I mean. Okay, so you see the actual 288 GTO. You see how sleek it is. You see its tire profile. Okay, take very close note of its tire profile. And now let's have a look at the much feated TLVN version. All right. And I promise you, once you see it, like me, you will not be able to unsee it. Look at how much thicker the tires on the TLVN are than on the actual car. All right, and then of course, there's the fact that as with uh, many other TLVNs, you actually have to glue the side mirrors onto the car, which is not the easiest thing to do, okay? And of course, this brings me to the last point. The TLVN uh, Ferrari 280 GTO, at least in my country, costs the equivalent of $55. I am sure that in countries outside of Asia, it costs exponentially more. So what am I getting at, folks? Well, I, I just have to be very candid once again. Tomica Limited Vintage Neo screwed up the Ferrari 288 GTO. This has been on my chest for a while. I mean, there was a large part of me that just didn't want to record this video and say, you know what, 
no, you're under no obligation to buy this. Just move on, record the stuff you like. But no, this bothers me, you know, because Tomica had a golden opportunity to do this car justice. I mean, anyone else who's held the license or the opportunity has screwed it up. Let me give you an example. Kyosho, ugh. Hot Wheels, ugh. So Tomica Limited Vintage Neo was collector's chance, was the collector's chance to see a legendary Ferrari done as well as this one. Okay, I, I mean, this, this was very much a golden opportunity for Tomica. And somehow, despite having no doubt all the technology at their disposal, computer-aided design, 3D printing, all of that stuff, they still couldn't pull it off. And to my mind, that's heartbreaking. You know, and, and in good conscience, I could not spend the $55 on a model that I know I could not possibly be happy with. Now, I'm putting this out there because as far as I can tell, everyone else is just basically blowing smoke up, you know, or blowing sunshine up Tomica's butt, you know, patting them on the back for a job well done. So if it means being the lone voice of dissent and saying, no, you didn't do a good job, well, so be it. Let me be the bad guy. But the reason I'm making this video is because it seems to me that Tomica is going to have the sub-license for the foreseeable future. And that means a lot more Ferraris are going to pass through their hollowed halls. You know, they are going to come up with a lot more Tomica Limited Vintage Neo models. And my goodness, you know, this is the standard they need to meet. All right. Every time they, they come up with a model, they have to take a look at what they did with the Ferrari F40 and say, okay, how do we do that for this model? They must not make models the way they did that F35 Berlinetta. And they must not make models the way they did the 288 GTO. I'm not going to dare to rate it because I didn't spend money on it. It's not a part of my collection. But I want to end this video again with my very honest assessment that I believe in my heart of hearts that Tomica Limited Vintage Neo screwed up the model, screwed up the Ferrari 280 GTO. And that's really, really a shame. Well, that's it for this rant. I know it's not the usual fare. And rest assured, we will get back to regular programming soon enough. But I hope you folks are okay with indulging me this one time because this is something I really wanted to get off my chest for quite some time. All right, and that's it for this video for my little rant, okay? If you guys are new to the channel, please consider giving me a like and a subscribe and hitting that notification bell. I got lots of other content that doesn't just consist of ranting about cars that I don't buy. All right, and thanks for watching.